music critic for the Irish Voice and IrishCentral.com. <clears throat> um, how did you get that job? It was just one of those things where I was a subscriber for so many years at the Irish Voice. I loved that paper. Mm -hmm. And there was just this little ad in the paper that said, wanted music columnists. They had somebody that resigned and I just put a portfolio together of my favorite albums and I talked about why they were my favorites. And they said, okay, you know, let's take a chance on this guy. We'll give him a few hundred words. And then that few hundred words eventually came into a full page column. And then 17 years later, here I am. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was just one of those things where I just absolutely had to write for the Irish voice when I saw that ad. It was just that St. Paul off the cross moment. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and uh, so obviously music, you know, being a, the music, a music critic, music is important to you. Uh, and presumably Irish music is important to you. Has it, has it always been the case? Have you always listened to Irish music? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Growing up Irish, um, you know, it's a classic case of, uh, you know, your kids probably think your music that you make or the music that you listen to is the most uncool music ever. So I felt the same way. I mean, the Clancy Brothers, I hated all of it. And then eventually when the Pogues came on or, or Black 47 came on and you saw the mixture of Irish music with reggae and funk and punk, which is what I was listening to, then all of a sudden you started to like those bagpipes and the flutes and the fiddles and then you'd eventually go back to, you know, those original Clancy Brothers albums and you really fell in love with them all over again. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big Rolling Stones freak. So I'm such a big Rolling Stones freak that I also want to know what influenced Keith Richards and then I would have found Chuck Berry that way. And in the same way, uh, that's what I'm, that's how I came to Irish music. And then just had a very deep love affair with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we're fond of pointing out on Celtic Sunday Brunch, Irish music is, is a very big tent, you know. Uh, yeah. Depending on who you ask, it can include anything from, like I said, the Clancy Brothers to, you know, New Age harp music to uh, archival recordings to uh, the Dropkick Murphys. So has your, um, from that first, you know, rebirth or birth of your love of Irish music, has, has your taste in Irish music uh, changed or evolved? Well, to your point, it is such a wide taste. Mm -hmm. um, my, my father's very fond of saying that, you know, he didn't think I'd last six months doing this job because there wasn't six months worth of stuff to write about. But here I am 17 years later, and I haven't come up empty on a column yet because there's so many things produced by Irish and Irish Americans. And it's all over the map. It's country, it's folk, it's rock, it's punk, it's fiddles, it's no fiddles. You know, even somebody like a Roseanne Cash, who comes from the Johnny Cash family, and Johnny has Scotch-Irish roots. I mean, she's making some great stuff. So, you know, it all adds up to, uh, you know, never a dull moment in the in the in in my column, mm -hmm. so. And uh, so to launch, this is your brand on Shamrocks 2, uh, you've mounted a, a rock and read book tour. And uh, in the interest of full disclosure, you have asked me to perform. As, and in the interest, yeah, mm -hmm. we want to make sure this is a very honest interview. Uh -huh. And You're uh, rocking with me. So that said, uh, can you tell us about this tour? Uh, where will you be appearing and uh, what can an audience member expect? Well, the tour actually comes from, again, I've been writing this column for 17 years and I have a pretty good sense of who's good. Uh, and I think you're very good, by the way. Thank but, you, uh, you know, I, th I think that um, that's really part of a pub culture. You know, when you went into a pub in Ireland, there wasn't a Barnes & Noble. So, you know, books would be launched in a pub and albums would be launched in the pub and music would be launched in a pub. And that's how it is. So it, in a way, it's really a throwback to Irish culture where, you know, you're in pubs and clubs and Irish bookstores and regular bookstores and you're doing those kinds of um, rock and read book signings so it's really it's really been great and uh, I just have a real great mixture of uh, singer songwriter blues folk that are that's going to be coming with me so I'm going to read a few passages people are going to rock vice versa yeah and where, where are these dates? so I'm actually going to be uh, actually this is your brain on shamrocks.com is the website and I update that pretty regularly so I think that that's probably the best place to take a look this is your brain on shamrocks.com will also give you things like um, blogs tastes of what the books are like um, you'll actually get some reviews on there those kinds of things so everything you need to know about the books including where I'm going to be to sign them are this is your brain on shamrocks.com what I'm also trying to do with the book signing is to give draw attention to the artists that I think are really worthwhile and you know if we're all fishing from the same pier and you know you your fans as an example 
love the way you do Irish music, they'll probably like a book like this. Conversely, people that like my book will probably like your music. And, you know, we just have that kind of a symbiotic relationship. Thank you.